Okay, our uh, first session after the coffee break is from uh, is um, uh, for Nikki from uh, University of uh, Milano. Oh, sorry, oh, oh, Kaka. Sorry, uh, who will be talking about uh, parabolic sun groups in even Artian groups of FC type. Okay, thank you, Alex. Firstly, I wanted to start the to thank the organizers for the event and for having me as a speaker. Okay, I will talk about parabolic subgroups in even arting groups of FC type. And in the first part, I will give a lot of definitions to trying to unpack what's going on on the type. Okay, firstly, I will talk about art in TIDS groups, also known as just arting groups, which is a class of groups which appears a lot in mathematics and also in geometry group theory. And some of the basic examples included here are free groups, free appealing groups, braid groups, which were an inspiration for generalizing them to arting groups, and also a class of right, in, uh, right angle arting groups, abbreviated as RAG shortly. And they are also related to another famous class of groups known as Coxeter groups, and we will see the relation below. Okay, to define them, we will use the so-called darting graph, which is a simplicial labeled graph consisting of this information. First, we have a set of vertices, V, and then a set of edges, which is a, a set of two element subset of vertices, of distant vertices. So in particular, we don't allow loops and no multiple edges between two vertices. And the third part of the information of the labeled graph is the labeling map, which, which labels every edge with natural numbers greater than one. Okay, and we want this from this information of the graph to define the group by giving its presentation. And we want the vertices of the graph to present generators and the labeled edge, edges to present the relations of the group. In particular, if we have a labeled edge connecting vertices A and B, which has a label, a natural number K, then we want it to represent this relation. So we have in the left hand side, we have an alternating product of A and B starting with A and it has K factors. And on the right hand side, we have also an alternating product of B and A in this case, starting with B again of K factors. So now when we have the graph, we, we define the, when we have the arting graph, we define the arting group by giving a presentation for it. So the generators are the vertices and the relations are the ones coming from edges as given before, or with this new notation using uh, product. Okay, as, as I'll, I'll give an example. Here we have a graph with four vertices, A, B, C, D, and three edges. So this graph will define a group generated by the vertices A, B, C, D. And now the relations are coming from edges. So for example, for the pair A and B, the label is two. So we have just an alternating product of length two, and this becomes just a commutation. And the same for the pair AC and BC. And whenever we have an arting graph, we can also define a Coxeter group associated to it. And this will also be the Coxeter group associated to our arting group. And the presentation for the Coxeter group coming from the graph is almost the same as the one before, except for every vertex, we add the extra relations that V squared is equal to one. So the generators are involutions now. And obviously we have a natural quotient map from, from the arting group to the Coxeter group by sending a generator to itself. And now we can use the Coxeter graph to define one class of arting groups. So we say that an arting group or the arting graph defining it is of spherical type, or sometimes it's called a finite type, if the Coxeter group associated to it is finite. And this class of group is very well known and uh, a lot of problems that are open in general for arting groups are solved in this class. And also the problem that we'll treat today is known to hold in this class. Another important class is the class of right angle arting groups. And, in this, and this is the case when the labels in our graphs are just twos. So we don't have greater uh, natural numbers labeling by edges are better than two. And since all the edges are labeled by two, we can also drop the labeling and just 
say that uh, a relation is a commutation between vertices, if and only if there is an edge between these two vertices. And uh, the class that I will talk about today is the class of even arcing groups, where the edges are labeled by even natural numbers. So it can be two, four, six, and any even number. And in particular, since two is an even number, this class of even arcing groups contains right angle tarting groups. And a lot of techniques used for right angle tarting groups also have a appropriate side in, in this class of groups. And now another part that appeared on the title was that of parabolic subgroups. And these are certain subgroups of arting groups, which are generated by a subset of vertices. So if you pick a subset of the vertices of, of the graph, the subgroup generated by those vertices is gonna, call, is gonna be called the standard parabolic subgroups. Instead, the conjugate, conjugators of that subgroup by some G in our group are called parabolic subgroups. Oops, sorry. Okay, and then there is a result, this theor theorem of Wanderleck that, that says that the standard parabolic subgroups are itself arting groups. So they have an arting group structure and the graph that defines the structure is the, the one induced by the subset. So the edges on this graph are the, are the edges of the original graph where the endpoints are in S. And the, the label is the same as the label coming from the big graph. And the study of parabolic subgroups is important because a lot of time, times properties for the whole groups are deduced using properties of parabolic subgroups as, as smaller arting groups in some sense. And also in the geometric level, when constructing complexes where arting groups act on, these complexes are often constructed using parabolic subgroups and maybe their cosets as building blocks. So studying the behavior of parabolics is very important. And one way to, one path, let's say, to study this behavior would be the intersection of the parabolics. And this is an important to understand the whole group. And one of the conjectures in Regarding arting groups is the one that says that intersection of parabolic subgroups are again parabolic. This is known for right angle arting groups and arting groups of spherical type. And when we regard only the standard parabolics, then there is a theorem again from Van der Leck that says that their intersection of standard parabolics is again a standard parabolic. And also there is a descriptive way to get the result. So Parabolics based on A and B, when they intersect, they give a parallel standard parabolic based on the intersection of A and B. <clears throat> and in even arting groups, we have this uh, notion of retractions for, par for any parabolic subgroups. So firstly, for when we have a, a subgroup of a group, we say that uh, a morphism from the whole group to the subgroup is a retraction. If when we restrict the map to the subgroup, we get the identity. And the retraction is something that we have in even arting groups always for any, uh, any standard parabolic subgroup. And in fact, for any parabolic subgroup. So if S is a subset of vertices, then we, we have this map rho of S, which maps the generators belonging to S to itself and the other generators to identity. And this in fact defines a retraction for any standard parabolic subgroup. And one good thing about retraction is that they commute and one has this identity. But for any two subsets, a retraction on A and B commute and they, they give the retraction of on A intersected B. Sorry again. And the use of retractions in even arting groups make, makes a lot of results quite straightforward. For example, let's, let's see how this result that intersection of two parabolics is equal to the parabolic of the intersection of subsets is proved in even arting groups. So one on containment is clear because the, the subgroup is contained in both parts. So it obvi it's obviously also contained in the intersection. So, and for the other part, let's, let's pick an element in the intersection. 
So it belongs to both parts. So when we apply retractions, we get this equality. And now we want to show that this is contained in G A intersected B. So we apply, we apply the appropriate retraction to it and we get this equality using the commutation of retractions. And in particular, we see that X is in the image of row A intersected B. So we get that X is contained here. Okay, this was very easy proof in the even case. However, retractions are not always present in Artin groups. For example, in where, when the labels are odd, we can, we can have examples where we don't have retractions for certain parabolics. For example, if we choose this graph, which gives this group as by, by this presentation, then the parabolic over the set AC it doesn't provide a retraction because if we assume that we, we have a retraction, this is obviously gonna be a surjective morphism and it's gonna induce a surjective morphism and abelianizations as well. But the abelianization of the first is gonna be just Z and for the second it's gonna be Z squared. So we, we won't be able to get a surjective map from Z to Z squared. And now we arrived at the final piece, which is of F, being of FC type. So an arting group is called of FC type. If whenever we have a complete subgraph uh, in, our, in our group, the associated parabolic subgroup is of spherical type. In other words, the Coxeter group associated to the to this subset delta is gonna be fine. However, in even arting groups, there is another uh, identification for being of FC type. And this comes from a paper of Conchita and Luis Perez and Blasco. And it says that an even arting group is of FC type. If and only if all, the, whenever we see a triangle in our graph, it's gonna have at least two edges labeled by two. And the third one can be an even number. Okay, and our main result, what I will talk about today is this theorem that says that in even arting groups of FC type, the intersection of parabolic subgroups is stable on their intersections. So intersection of parabolic subgroups give again parabolic subgroups. Um, in particular, the class of being of FC type also include the regs, because in regs, whenever we have a triangle, all the edges are labeled by two. So in particular, at least two of them are labeled by two. And we're gonna use some of the properties uh, of regs which generalize to our case. And in particular, we also get a proof of the case of regs by restricting to this class. So another use of retraction is this reduction problem, which says that intersection of two parabolic subgroups. So this is a parabolic subgroup over A and this one over B can be presented as intersection of two parabolic subgroup over the same set. In this case, both are C. And also C is equal to the intersection of A and B. Okay. So this is good because now we can consider all, all the intersections over the same subset. Uh, and if we look at the, the equation above, if we multiply on the left by F minus one, A minus one, and on the right by GB, we, we, we see that this, that intersection is just a conjugation of something like this, GC intersected H, GC H minus one for some H which comes from computing that. So in particular, we, we can also, now we can reduce the problem to considering also only the retractions of this type, GA intersected G, GA, G minus one. And this comes only from using retraction. So this is in even arting groups without assuming FC type yet. Okay, and <clears throat> one particular subcase in the case of FC type is the one where the graph is complete. And in this case, I mean, the group is gonna be of spherical type. So the result is already known, but also the subgroup, the group over a complete graph is just a product of Z's and dihedral arting groups. So it's gonna be a direct product of Z's and 
arting groups with two generators. Another good thing that we will use is that public subgroups, as we saw, are tracks, and we we, we use this we use this before to reduce the problem a bit, and we will use it again. And another tool that we have is using geometry of buster trees, because we will see that parabolic subgroups behave as stabilizers of vertices on the tree. And we also use randomizer stripe procedure to, to find a presentation for certain subgroups of our groups. In, in, the, in, the, in our case, the kernels of retractions in when we retract from the whole group to the subgroup containing generated by only one of them. Okay, and here is the definition of Lincoln star in graph in graphs. So for a vertex in our graph, the link of the vertex will be all the other vertices that are uh, that have an edge with one of them points being V, but not including V. And the star of V is just the link of V and V and also including V. So it's one element more in the star than in the link. Okay, so we will use these tools above to, to reduce the main theorem to another case, which will be to consider the intersection of GA and the conjugate of it, assuming that this condition holds. So for, for every X outside of A, we have that uh, the star of that X is everything. And this in particular gives a proof for right angle parting groups because in this case, the whole group can be presented as a di direct product of GA and whatever is left outside. And in that case, the intersection is going to be on the GA of two parabolas. Okay, and here is a lemma, which is a particular case of the main theorem. So we consider this kind of graphs when we have an X and every element of A is connected to the X, but the A is totally disconnected like this. And here the idea to prove is like this. So we want to consider this intersection and both, both of these parabolic subgroups lie on the kernel of the, of the retraction or of X, which is a retraction on the parabolic containing only the element X. Okay, then we use the randomizer schreie procedure to, to kind of describe the kernel. And when we describe it, we, we see that the kernel is gonna be a free group. And it's the number of, uh, generators on the free group depends on these labels K1, K1 up to Kn. And then we are left to consider an intersection of two subgroups in, inside of a free group. And for this, we use this tool that is called Stalling Foldings, which uh, computes intersection of subgroups inside of free groups. And then we get that the, this intersection is going to be a, para, a standard parabolic for some subset of A which can also be A, and this, this give, gives the proof. And here I provided a sketch of the main theorem. So we want to, to see that this intersection is parabolic, and the, the way that the theorem proceeds is by nested inductions on number of vertices of the graph and the number of vertices in this subset A. There is also another nested induction which, which deals with the number of labels on edges that are greater than two. But I, I didn't include that here because it, it's inside of one of these cases. And then we use the Busser theory to kind of reduce the problem even more. And there is a case study on A and also G. And this yields the, this results that we want. So it either yields the first one where we can present the whole group as a direct product of GA and whatever is left outside. And this, in this case, the whole intersection is going to be just GA. Or it states that our intersection is going to be inside a parabolic subgroup with, with smaller s, smaller than the one of A. And then this, this goes to the induction step on M. Or in the other case, both parabolics belong to 
some standard parabolics, which is proper in V. And this is done by induction on the number of vertices. Or in the final case is expressed as an intersection of parabolic as in the lemma that I described above, which, which is kind of, it can also go back to just one dihedral Artin group case. But in, in other case, we, we can get the, the whole intersection is GA, or we go again back to the case one where we can still work by induction. And another tool that we use is this kernel of this retraction, because before we considered retractions only on one element, but here is kind of the complement, which works on everything except one element. And the kernel of this is free, which comes from another, from the same paper of Lewis, Conchita, and Gasco. Okay, and finally, I just wanted to give a kind of a reduction using Basser theory. I think it's interesting in the geometric level. So let's consider the parabolic GA and the conjugation of it. And suppose that their union is not contained in a proper parabolic subgroup of G. And for some max outside of A, A is not contained in the link of X. Okay, then we can reduce the problem by stating that the intersection is contained in the proper parabolic subgroup over a proper subset of A. So this, this is a good result in the induction procedure. Okay, and the proof is divided into two cases. In the first case, we, we, we assume that these two cosets are equal. And this means that G is contained in here. And in this case, both parabolics are contained in this proper parabolic. So this would contradict the, the assumption one. Okay, so we can, we can assume now that these two cosets are different. And in arting groups, we, we can express just by looking at the presentation, we can express the arting group as amalgamated product of smaller pieces, such that this part and this part, the union of these two parts give the whole graph and the intersection gives this, this graph. So one can split our arting group like this. And whenever we, we have a uh, product, amalgamated product, there is a Basser tree corresponding to, to the splitting. And the vertices on this tree come in two, two types. The first type is the coset of the first factor. And the second type is the coset of the second factor. And yeah, I denoted them by different colors. And only vertices belonging to different types can be adjacent in our tree. Like here. And the whole graph acts, acts on the tree without edge inversions. And moreover, the vertex stabilizers of this section correspond to two types, let's say. <clears throat> and there can be conjugates of the first factor uh, or conjugate of the second factor for the appropriate type of vertices. And the edge stabilizers, on the other hand, are conjugate of, uh, of this where we amalgamate all the, the, the subgroup, which is glued. And since we assume that these two are different and we see that they are cosets of the same subgroups, of the same subgroup, they, they are distinct vertices in our graph and of the same type. And they, their stabilizers, since the group acts by multiplication on the left, they, we can compute the stabilizers which give these parabolic subgroups. <coughs> since we are in a tree, and these two were distinct vertices, there is a unique geodesic connecting, connecting them. And also, oops, sorry. also we assume that X is not in A. So since X is not in A, A is a, is a subset of V without X. So we have these inclusions for both parabolic subgroups. And, this, and since these parabolic subgroups were stabilizers of vertices, it means that our original parabolic subgroups also stabilize vertices corresponding to these two cosets. And in fact, the intersection of these two, since they stabilize vertices on the ends of the geodesic, the intersection is gonna stabilize the whole geodesic connected to these vertices. 
and it also stabilizes an, any edge belonging to this geodesic. And since the stabilizers of edges are conjugators of this factor, then the P is going to be contained in a, in a conjugate of that. And now, since P is equal to this part and also contained in this part, it can be represented as an intersection of, of these two. And in fact, P is contained in this intersection. And before we saw that parabolic subgroups over different subset, subsets can be represented as parabolic subgroups over the intersection of those subsets. So we can express P as a, contained in this sub, par, parabolic over the subsets, which is properly contained on A, because we earlier assumed that the link of X is not contained on A. And we, we arrived at our desired what we wanted to prove since P now is contained in a proper in a parabolic subgroup which is over a proper subset of A. Okay, this is the one of the reduction for proving the main theorem. Okay, and the the other goals that we are related to this and we want to work on is to look in the intersection of parabolics only on arting groups of FC type without using the even case. And in fact, the paper of Louis Paris and his collaborators works on that. And they, they showed that the intersection of two parabolic subgroups is a parabolic subgroup if one of the parabolics is of finite type. So there is a small place for improving the result. And yeah, they also use this action on tree and Basser theory as us. But they they cannot use the retraction theory, which <clears throat> which works only on the even case. However, there for for this result, there there can be a nice exp exploration of our two techniques to maybe put put together the result for without assuming even articles. Okay, thank you for your attention. Okay, let's thank the speaker. Are uh, there any quick questions? Okay. Um, so you have on this slide that the goal is to prove uh, for parabolic subgroups or the parabolic subgroups in other groups of type of FC, FC type are closed mm -hmm. under intersection. Uh, I'm guessing that you, this is believed to be true. Uh, how, how general do you think uh, parabolic subgroups being closed under intersection? How general do you think of a property that that is? You mean in the class of all arting groups? Yeah. Well, is is there would there be any? Um, what I'm really asking is, do you personally think that, that that there's some nice classification of the arting groups for which this property holds? Mm. Yeah, so, so far the question about intersectional parabolics have, have been proved in different classes with mm. different techniques. I mean, the mm. one about FC type is believed to be true, I think, for a long time, as a lot of people have been working on it. But for a general classification of where the result holds, I, I, I would be surprised to, to get a classification. Mm. I mean, the upshot is that the, this works in all arting groups. So if there was a counterexample somewhere, I, I would be very surprised. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, were there any other questions? Okay, if there's uh, no other questions, let's uh, thank the speaker again. Thank you. Thank you.